Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you how you can create buttons dynamically in Unity. So situations where this could be useful are things like a level browser, which is what I'll be showing today, or something like a lobby browser in an online game where you don't know how many lobbies there's going to be. So I've got a basic scene set up already. Uh, as you can see, it's very fun, very real game too. If you want to see the first version of this game, you can go check out my video. Uh, in the scene, I've got the main camera, the default main camera. I've made a game manager, we'll look at the script in a second. Uh, I've got the main menu canvas here, which is the one you see here. Uh, it just has a little bit of text and a few buttons for different worlds. Uh, it also has a main menu script on it, which we'll also look at in a second. And then I've got another canvas here for the level browser, which is just so far a panel. Let's look at the scripts I've got already too. Pretty basic so far. The game manager just stores some information about our game uh, and it's also singleton so we can access it anywhere in our script. And then I've got the main menu here which has a reference to the level browser and a method to show levels when one of those world buttons is pressed. It will run this method and just set the current world and enable the level browser and disable the main menu. We'll do a little demo run here just to show off what there is so far. So let's say I want to go to world one. We'll click on that, nothing shows up, uh, but our game manager says we are currently in world one, so that's working good. Now, let's make it so instead of nothing happening when our level browser gets enabled, let's make some buttons pop up. So, let's go create a new script. I'm going to call it level browser. And in here, I'm going to get rid of these two methods because we don't need them, but we're going to use another Unity kind of default method, which is on enable. This will trigger whenever the game object that this component is attached to gets enabled. Uh, we're also going to import the engine.ui as we'll need to access some text features for creating these objects. So I'm going to show you two ways to create buttons dynamically using Unity. The first one is going to be using instantiation and the second one will be using an object pool. So for the instantiation, let's, let's create a public game object and let's call it button prefab and then we're also going to have another game object which will be the button parent so this is where all of the buttons will be spawning underneath as children and then in our on enable method this is where we're going to create our buttons then we'll want the buttons to show up whenever this game object gets enabled so what we're going to do is we're going to write a four and we'll just use i equals zero uh, is less than, and this is where we'll use our game manager, game manager dot instance dot level counts, and then we'll use the game manager again in here. It's going to be a little bit long, but it'll work. Uh, game manager dot instance. You also set these before the for loop as well if you want to make the lines not as long. And then we're going to use current world, and then since the buttons are set up to use like the actual world numbers, we want one less just for the array numbers. And then we'll just do i plus plus. So in here, let's write game object. And we'll call it new button. And then we'll make it equal and instantiate of our button prefab. And then for the second parameter here, we'll need a transform. So let's put our button parent. And then just write dot transform. So this will make the parent object of this new object the button parent. And then there's two things we're going to want to do in here. The first one is going to be we're going to want to set the text of the button to be the level number. So the way I like to do this is I'm going to go create a new script and let's call it level button. And in here we'll get rid of these two methods because this is just going to store some information about the button that uh, we'll need some access to. So this will just make it easily accessible to us. So we're also going to use unity engine.ui in here. And then we'll just make a public text. Let's just call it level text. And that's it. If there's other information you need on your buttons, you can store that in here too. But for now, we're just using one text. So we'll just keep it at. And then since our button prefab will have a level button component to it, let's do new button dot get component. And then we'll write level button. And then since we made the text public in the level button, we can do level text. And then we'll just make it equal to i plus 1, since i will be 1 less than what the actual level would be. And then we'll just make that to string. That's a string. 
and we need to make sure that we write dot text in here as well <laughs> and there we go that should be working so the next thing we're going to do is to make it so each button has a method attached to it as well so let's make that method let's call it private void select level and then this will take in a couple parameters let's pass in a world integer and let's pass in a level integer as well so for this tutorial, I'm not going to do any level loading or anything. So we'll just do a debug in here to show that it's working. We'll do debug.log and then we'll say loaded level. You know, it's not actually loading the level. And then we'll do world plus a dash. And then we'll do our level. So then I'll just say loaded level, for example, one dash one, if it's world one level one, and we don't want parentheses there, we want semicolon. <laughs> So now that we have this method here, we can go back up to our on enable method and add a listener to our new button. So what we need to do for that is we'll go new button again, and this time we'll do another get component, but this time it'll be button. And then we can do an on click dot add listener. And then in here, we need to do an event. We're going to do another parentheses and then equal sign greater than sign and then Put in our method here uh, so we'll do select level and then we can pass in parameters too so this is how we'll make each button do something slightly different we'll pass in our current world so that'll be our game manager dot instance dot current world and then for the level part what i'm going to do is create an instance so we'll make a new int here let's just call it level num and then we'll just make it equal to i plus one and then we'll just pass our level num as the level parameter now let's go back into our unity here and we'll have to do a couple things. First thing we need to make sure we do is to add our level browser component to our level browser. And then we'll need two things here as you can see. So the first thing we need is our button prefab. So let's make a new button. We'll use our level browser here to make it and just go UI and then button. This should be good enough. We don't need to do anything too crazy with it. And then I'm gonna create a new folder here and call it prefabs and then let's just drag the button in there to make it a prefab and then we can get rid of it again and drag this one down here make sure you do this one down here into the slot there and then we also need a button parent so what i'm going to do for this since we want it to be fully dynamic i'm going to make a under this panel i'm going to make a scroll view this will make it so even if there is like a ton of buttons that can't all show on the screen, it'll make it scrollable so you can scroll through all of them. We'll make this a little bit bigger. Uh, the scroll view will have a bunch of different things in it. The main thing we want though, the main thing we'll be worried about is the content part here. So in our level browser for our button parent, let's drag the content component into that. And then one thing I forgot to do with the button too, let's go back into our prefab here. We can show off the prefab view a little bit too, is we need to make sure we add our level button component to it as well. And then drag the text from the button. So that one right there onto there, and that should be all set up now. So our game's looking a little funky. That's because a couple canvases are on. So let's go ahead and turn that level browser off. And let's see if everything is working the way we want it to. So in our game manager, for my level accounts, I have 10, five, and seven. So level 1 should load 10 buttons, uh, world 2 should load 5 buttons, and world 3 load 7. So let's say, let's try 2, let's try 2. I'm feeling like world 2 right now. And uh, something's not looking right here. Let's have a look, see what's going on. Let's look at our level browser here. And we know our content, part of the scroll view here, is where our buttons should be spawning. So we can see that there's 5 buttons spawned here, but we only see 1. That's because all the buttons are spawning in the same spot. So they're all overlapping on each other. So if we take, this should be button two here, I believe. Uh, let's go to our scene and move it. Yeah, we can see that there's the two there. So they're all on top of each other. So we need to fix this somehow too. So what we can do for this is let's go back into our level browser here and let's go to our content object and let's add a couple new components. We're going to do a content size fitter and let's make the vertical fit preferred size. And we're also gonna add a grid layout group. So what this will do is it'll make the objects that spawn, spawn in a grid while within this component. So I'm feeling like world one this time. Let's go try world one. You can see all our buttons are created now in a grid layout. Uh, we'll test our black level method now too to make sure that's working. So let's click on level one here. As you can see, it says loaded level 1-1. We can go 1-2. 
the wall and all of them should be working good. Looks like it. And now this still doesn't look too great. So you can play around with the grid layout a little bit. Let's do it in play mode. And you can change the cell size. As you can see, as you change it, it still stays in a grid, which is great. That's what we want to see. Let's make them 200 uh, by 200. And then you can change the spacing between them too. Maybe we'll make them a, a little bit smaller, actually. 150 by 150, that's looking a little bit better. And we'll add some spacing in between them. So we get some nice spacing in there. Let's make it 50 uh, on both. Give it a little bit of room between them. And then we do a little bit of padding too to make sure that it's not like shifted to one side completely. You can center it a little bit. Uh, so on our left, let's add a little bit of spacing. Let's say 40, that's looking good. Maybe we'll do a 40 at the top as well. Maybe a little bit less. Well, I'm feeling a 20 there. So still not looking great because it's still using Unity's default assets, but you can kind of get the idea of it. You can obviously change the text size as well. That would probably help a little bit too. Um, but you can see we have our scroll wheel now. This is a good way to show that off too. So now that the buttons are going off the screen because they're bigger, uh, there's not enough space to fit all of them. We have our scroll bar here that you can scroll down with and go all the way down to our bottom one here, which is 10. This is working fine. Everything seems to be working good, but it's not as efficient as it could be because each button has to be created when this component is enabled. And if, for example, we had a back button here where you go back and then back to the level browser again, you'd have to delete all these buttons and then create whole new ones and that can add up. So I'm going to show you another way you can do this. Uh, it won't be necessarily creating buttons dynamically it'll be more showing buttons dynamically but it'll kind of act the same so i'm going to copy this grid layout group because i'm liking how it's looking now let's copy that component so we don't lose it when we exit play mode go back to the level browser here and just make sure i remember to assign that before we move on we'll just paste component values and now what we're going to do is instead of creating our buttons dynamically like that we're going to make an object pool and then turn on buttons dynamically Let's drag our button prefab into the content object here and let's create 10 of them, let's say. We'll hit control D a bunch. We got 10 of them now and they all say button right now, but that's okay. And then let's go back to our level browser here, level button array, and let's call it level button. So in our on enable method now, let's get rid of some of these parts. So we're not going to be instantiated anymore. We'll keep the for loop, but let's get rid of what's inside it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write level buttons and then we'll use our i there dot game object dot set active true because we'll set all those game objects back in there to be off so that when we're not using them you don't see them and then when we are using them we set them to be active and then we'll write again level buttons i and we'll access our text this time to set our text object again so we'll write level text text remember to do that this time and then we'll do the same thing i plus one uh two string and also before i forget let's add our level num instance here by doing int level num equals i plus one same as before and then this time before we add our listener first we want to remove any other listeners that might have been on it from the last time we access the level browser we'll write level buttons i uh, get component button dot on click dot remove all listeners that'll get rid of any lingering ones and then now we can go in and add our new listener by doing again a uh, level buttons i get component button dot on click dot add listener and then again same thing as before with our select level and then we do our game manager dot instance dot current world and our level num that we set up but i also want to add a back button to our level browser now just to fully show off what it can do let's add a new public void call it back button so i'll make a new public game object main menu for ease of use and then we'll go main menu uh, set active true and then before we turn off our level browser we need to make sure we turn off all the buttons from before so that they're ready for the next time we go in we'll do it for each level button we'll just call it l in level buttons 
we'll just do l dot game object dot set active and false and now we're ready to turn off our level browser so we'll just do this dot game object dot set active and false that should be all set up let's go back into unity now and we'll go to our level browser panel here we'll create a new button doesn't really matter what it looks like we'll put it in the bottom right corner here we'll make it say back and since this one isn't dynamic we can go right in and add a on click ourselves so we'll just drag in the level browser object the level browser script and back button and before we run the game we need to make sure we drag our main menu into our level browser now since we updated that and you can see I tried it once and I got that error there and let's go try it now so let's try world three here you can see there's the seven buttons if we look in our content object here we can see the first seven buttons are on and then there's three extras there that are not on uh, let's click them to make sure they're working we got loaded level three one three five three four so on looks like it's working good we got our back button now back to the main menu here and let's try world two this time as this world two only has five levels only the first five are on now everything is before and we got loaded level two five so on and so forth and let's try world one here too where we get our 10 buttons they're also all working the reason i chose 10 buttons for my pool is because the max amount of buttons i'll need is 10 so if you need more create more buttons if in a future point you end up needing more buttons you can just easily add them to so let's go back and everything seems to be working uh, I can show off a, a little bit of a polished product here. I'll add a little clip in here showing off the game I'm working on, the menu system I've got there. Uh, each world has the same amount of levels right now, but I've made it dynamically so that if in the future I create a new world where there is more than 10 levels, uh, it'll be easy enough to do. But that'll be it for this one. Uh, if this helped you out at all, make sure you leave a like, maybe consider subscribing. Uh, check out my other videos too. I only have one other one right now, but there'll be more in the future. And if there is another tutorial that you'd be interested in seeing me do, let me know in the comments. And of course, if you have any questions about this one, also let me know in the comments. But now that I'm done, all my calls to action there, uh, that'll be it for this one. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.